ladies and gents, you guys have been following the show first quarter. Here's where we chop it up. This is a very, very different chopping it up segment. We got a special announcement. We're dropping some big time news on all things covered. The source of this news is actually the person who is involved in the news. And that's Patrick Peterson himself. So I will now hand the mic over to Patrick Peterson so he can go ahead and just let this big time news out and about and everybody else can run with it because I'm excited to hear what he has to say. Hey, man, Mac. First of all, it's always great to be on All Things Covered. Yes, sir. But it's another great thing to just feel completed, you know. You know, I know complete you read, now? Yeah, you know, you know, you read the Bible. You know what number stands for completions. Mm-hmm. It was only right to do it. What? Whoa. Okay. Okay. So, so it was only right to go back to the seven, Matt. Oh, so so you're telling us your number for this upcoming season? Yeah. With the Minnesota Vikings, you going back to your college days and your high school days, and you rocking the number seven. Hey, it's official, man. For the for the everybody, don't think what to say. That's oh, that, that is that's the, that, that's the hard number too. That's not that's a soft it, number. What it's saying, side Matt. Yeah, that's the authentic. That's it. Yeah, that's that's the authentic. That's not a soft number. That's a hard number. So you Scroll rocking on. you you back at as you say seven. You rocking number Eight. seven. Why are yeah, you returning? Right. Why are you returning back to your, your your college number? Hey man, I think that's where it all started, man. Thing is, just like you like like we talked about a couple of shows ago, man. The good Lord working mysterious ways, man, and, and just all three of my you know my favorite numbers are aligning. You know, I got opportunity to rock back number seven. It's my 11th year, my birth, uh, I'm born on, uh, on the 11th day in July. Uh, my second favorite number is 21, the season, 21 season, the 2021 season this year. So, yeah. um, you know, everything just lined up perfect. And, you know, once they, you know, uh, you know, pass that new rule of, you know, skill position is able to wear, you know, any number between one and 49, it was only right. You know, I always wore it in high school, I wore it in college, I always felt comfortable with it. And that's who, you know, how how I felt that's what started, you know, me. So it was only right to go back to my roots and, and rock that set. So let me ask you a question. Let's say number 21 was available for the Minnesota Vikings. Mm -hmm. And with this new rule that allows DBs to wear single digit numbers, would you have still switched if number 21 was available or you were just set in stone lock when they made this rule? Uh, in place to be able to have single digit numbers. You were Man, set to go seven always, regardless. I always wanted to rock number seven in the league. You know, uh, I, and not the only reason because 21 is a dope number and obviously watching Dion where, you know, it, it's a popular number. So, you know, that was always my alternative number. You know, when I got into the league, you know, I, I had to pick a double digit. So it's either going to be 21 or 24 for Champ Bailey and Dion was like my guys yeah. who, uh, who I watched growing up. So now once once they made the change, it was just easy for me because seven was always my number. I felt like seven was like my number, like 21 is Dion's number. You know what I mean? And um, I just felt like, you know, in high school and college, I made seven known. I made it like you can tell when I went yeah. to LSU, you know, guys wanted to wear number seven. You know, yeah, I, obviously you did. They, you know, they went to they went on and they, they wore number seven in, in high school. Or Tyron didn't. But other guys wore in, uh, in high school. You know, I love for tradition there. So I felt like that's my number. <laughs> you know what I mean? Man, listen, I'm fired <laughs> up. I'm I'm ready. I'm I'm just gonna you know wait for my jersey to come in the mail. Right. So I hey, go ahead and put it in the frame. That's not what I'm gonna do, like, I might I might just see you this one, man. I ain't gonna wear this one. Okay, what what well, go ahead and sign it, sign, go ahead and get put your nice signature on that yeah, thing and, and, and put that in the mail when you get a chance. I have one request yes, for my guy Pat P. And me and talk Pat P, me. we talk football all the time. We don't just talk the ins and outs, you know, the technical side. We also talk, talk the look side, the swag side. <laughs> so since you're going back to your college, your high school number, I want to know, are you going back to your college 
and the helmet you wore when you first came into the league, because you know how I feel about these new age helmets, these double shell helmets. I call them the chicken coop, the revolutionary, uh, revo uh, revolutionary helmets they're wearing to try to prevent <laughs> concussions. Man, them helmets don't work. If you can go to sleep, you can go to sleep. If you get hit hard enough, I don't care what kind of shell you're wearing, you're going to go to sleep. <laughs> so my question for you, Pat P, right. you got seven. I know you had the one sleeve. On the one arm, you're showing the tats on the other arm. You know, you're going to have your, your all purple socks. Your cleat gang will be right. Are you going back <laughs> to the old? I don't know if it was the shorts or the right there, which was rocking, but you know the, 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 the face mask style I'm talking about. Are you going back to that style as well? It was a shirt. It was a shirt. It was the shirts. Yeah. Oh, Matt. You know, I, I, I don't know. You know what, Matt? When I get there, me and Dennis going to have a sit down. And uh, cause you know they stopped making that helmet. They outlawed that helmet, man. So you know I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta be within the guidelines, man. No, 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 so, no, no. They, 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 they outlawed the helmet. No more. They outlawed, yeah. they outlawed that particular style, but they came back with something that was similar. Cause okay. there are a few guys that still, there are a few guys that rock that style. I think Tyreek Hill yeah, is one. Are. Um, Stephon mm -hmm. Gilmore. Um, you got quite a few players that, that rock that style. So they can, man, yeah. you're a future Hall of Famer, man. They can work things out. <laughs> and tell Zim, don't do that. Might, don't do that, I might, Zim. I might, I might pull out the archives, man. I might pull it out. Man, listen. Hey, <laughs> listen. You know you know how you feel when that swag together? You know it's, it's a shutdown day. Right, Matter of well, fact, Ram, Ramsey was still rocking that same style. It's a different It's a different yeah. kind of helmet, but it's, it's a similar style. Yeah. I might, I, might, I might pull it back out this year, man. Just for you. There we have it. Hey, breaking news here. All things covered. Pat P just revealed what number he will be wearing. All the Viking fans, I know you guys are tuning in. Better get ready to go rush to the store, get that number seven, because seven will be causing a lot of havoc in your stadium, <laughs> at home, in a stadium near you. Mm. Stay tuned. This is a big, big week. Every week is a big week for all things covered, but just in the football world, it's a big week. You know why? The NFL draft is happening this Thursday in Pat's favorite city, uh, city Cleveland. <laughs> Cleveland will be hosting the NFL draft this week. Felt like it's only right that we go back down a memory lane with our very own Pat P. Talk about his draft experience. Granted, we know the experience. He was a top five uh, selection to the Arizona Cardinals. But the week, because when Pat got drafted back in 2011, I think it was, yep. the draft happened in New York City. A very, very, yeah, the City, Big Apple. Man. City that never sleeps. So, Pat, what was the week like for you getting ready for the draft in 2011? Uh, if I can recall, like, because I think the draft happened on a Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. Uh yeah, I think um, it was Thursday. I think it was Thursday. Yeah, it was a Thursday night. But Monday, everything was cool. I was in Florida, and I ended up traveling up to New York on Tuesday. Um, you know, you got to go through all the walkthrough, you know, where you're going to be stand, uh, staying, standing on the stage. You know, uh, they came and had a pre-draft party. And the day before, everything was just cool. You know, I was just pretty much chilling, chilling out in, uh, in the Big Apple. Uh, went to Flight Club, got a couple of J's. Um, my boy KP came with a cut. Uh, I think, I can't remember if she was working at LV at the time. I think her name was Jen, Jen, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Had my suit all laid out for me. Um, you know, got ready, went over to the, got in the car, radio, uh, rolled over to Radio City, rolled down, the, uh, uh, walked down the red carpet, um, got into the green room. And as you know, I wasn't there too long. Got the call from Arizona. <laughs> Uh, you know, all my family members, all my family members were uh, around the table. Had my girlfriend, well, my she was my girlfriend at the time, but my wife now. Uh, you know, my grandma, you, Walter, my grandpa, Scooter, my dad, uh, my sisters. Um, you know, yeah, I got the call from Arizona, and you know, I end up losing my damn phone at draft night because everything just went. <laughs> He wire after yeah. after I got the call, I put my phone on the table. Went went up to the stage, and next thing you know, I asked my girl, "Did she get grab my phone?" Didn't even grab my phone, so I lost my phone on draft night. Uh, but once I got drafted, that's when everything literally life changed because, mm -hmm. like, you know, now you walking out of the the radio city hall, now cameras all on you. You know, now your your, your name has been you know. Uh, on every TV screen right now. So everybody know who you are right now. So I'm walking around New York, like, you know, getting all the congratulations, this, that, and other. So it was fun, man. I, I had a blast, man. I, I, I Like I said, uh, I know I joked around with Cleveland. 
a lot this year, but if you have an opportunity to go experience the draft and be in the green room and be able to, to grow relationship with your other peers, go do it. You know, I, I definitely don't um, advise guys if they have the opportunity to turn that one down. I think that's, that's definitely an opportunity of a lifetime that you want to be able to relish and cherish for the rest of your life. So Mac, you know, with the 21 draft coming up, I know you got your draft, your GM hat on for uh, quite a while now. Who could my bikes take with the 14th pick, man? Could it be like, how could a top 10 shake out? Well, like, could it be all, all quarterbacks? And who who you think uh, who, who you think the bikes gonna take at 14? Well, the, the the top 10, I think, you know, people have been highlighting the quarterbacks. I don't think, this is my early, you know, I guess I don't wanna say under the radar statement, but uh, my big time, <laughs> statement for the draft i don't think more than four quarterbacks will be drafted in the top 10. i think the number is three i think three i'm I'm gonna throw that out there i think three um maybe four but if four hits eric send us over uh send me over the uh the top 10 and i'm gonna tell you right now okay the top 10 eric because the top three i know it's jacksonville the jets and in, uh in San Fran. So those three teams definitely San Fran, San Fran taking um yeah San Fran taking a quarterback. Yeah, where it gets gonna, real they're tricky. Gonna take, they're gonna take fields. Yeah, where, Dolph's where, not taking the quarterback. Oh, not taking wait a minute. No, no, no. San Fran might take Mac Jones, Pat P. No, they're gonna take fields, man. But but that's the thing. So those three teams definitely probably they he, will he, take he a quarterback. The wild card is Atlanta. I like Jones, but Jones is much more like a, a stationary quarterback and that offense and, and Kyle Shanahan offense you got to be able to and he can move but you got to be able to be able to throw the ball on the run play action boots he can do it see, he see can y'all, jump, do it. Y'all, y'all jumping on Matt Jones because he got a soccer dad body no, 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 and look, no, no, and look no, like no, he no, smoked no, no, cigarettes no no no, no I'm not saying that day. I'm not saying that Matt Jones he did he did awesome this year for what he had to do at Alabama but I'm, what I'm saying is athletically Justin Fields is more athletic. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All the same throws that Matt Jones can. That's what I'm I'm, saying. Man, Matt Jones was probably one of the more accurate quarterbacks. Matt Jones was more accurate last year than Joe Burrow was in 2019. Hmm. And and, and and he just like I said, when he take his shirt off, you're not gonna pick him to be on your sandlot football team because he got right. a little gut. His ab game ain't really. No, put no, together no, like no. That. Hey, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even look at that. I'm just I'm yeah, that's at what that a lot part. of people. That's what a lot of people yeah. look at because no, 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 the can, league is trying is starting to transition to guys that can really move, like quarterbacks that can make people miss, quarterbacks that can turn a thirty yard run into a forty or fifty. Because you know it's a copycat league. You look at some of the no, young no, up and coming quarterbacks. You know, they can all move. He might not be as athletic as uh, Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, Trey yeah. Lance, heck, even Trevor Lawrence. But I think he's getting criticizes a little more than deserving because he lacks the athleticism that they have. But I do agree. I'll say this, though, Pat P. San Fran will either take Justin Fields or Mac Jones, for sure. And, I, and it's going to be Justin Fields. Wow. Yeah. Any other name definitely would surprise me. But yeah, outside of those outside of those three teams, if there's not a team that trades up in the top 10, I don't know if Atlanta will take a quarterback. So that's why I, I only I say think, I think, at I least three Atlanta guys will go for sure. Yeah, I think Atlanta may trade out of the they should. Of that fourth pick. Um, they should. The Lions not taking a quarterback. Panthers no. not taking a quarterback. No, nope. Broncos need to take a quarterback. Yeah, that that that's a that's another question mark. We know Cowboys; yeah. they're not taking at, t- at yeah. 10. Bengals not taking a quarterback. No. Um. So. Yeah. So if if Atlanta if Atlanta trades out of that the fourth position, that's going to be the wild card. Yeah, whoever trades, if Atlanta trades out, whoever trades in, they're taking a quarterback. Right. I think. I think 100%. they're definitely moving, making that move to take a quarterback. Right. And to answer your second question, your new team, the Minnesota Vikings, what I see happening with them in the first round, currently they're at 14, right? They're selecting 14. Uh, they either go That's like offensive, offensive, offensive line or defensive line. Uh, they yeah. release a uh, starting left tackle from last year, Riley Reef. Uh, this is a very, very heavy, deep. O line class, yeah. especially at the tackle positions, so they might go out and go get a guy to, to uh, uh, fill the shoes left by uh, uh, Riley Reef. And if not, 
O line, maybe pass rusher. You know, go get you a, an up and coming uh, uh, pass rusher to pair it with Hunter, who's back yeah. healthy. Uh, but those are the two sides that I, I easily see going. You know, for the Vikings, either O line, specifically speaking, tackle or DN. Okay. In either either direction, I think the team your team gets better. So maybe if they feel like offensive alignment are so deep, you might go get a DN in the in the first round and double back or go back in the second round and go get one of the tackles that may be available because this is a very, very heavy offensive tackle draft. And now you can get quality value at that position in the second round and maybe even in the third round. Okay. I like that. Let's chop it up with Pat P. Has Pat hurt? This is where we check in on how Pat P has been doing with the sporting news during his offseason. Pat's record so far, 22 of 33. So he's gotten 22 questions right out of 33. So he's he's doing he's doing fairly well. Last last week, we're going to say he was three and a half out of four. <laughs> oh, thank you. You gave me that one. Three and a half out of four. So the first question for you is the actual body weight of Devontae Smith was just revealed last week. Do you remember how much he weighed? I did remember hearing that story, but I think I'm going to take a wild guess. I did hear the story, but I don't remember the number. Okay, if you don't give me the exact number, I'll 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 count it as being correct for you. Okay. If you can tell us, if you can get within three or four pounds of the actual weight. Yeah, it was it was 160 something. Okay, you got to give me a number. I said three or four, oh, three or four pounds. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, I think it was 167. Oh, you got it. It was 166. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I remember. I remember seeing it. <laughs> okay, so my second question for you before we go to the next has Pat her question: Do you think he should drop in the draft because he's 166 pounds, regardless of what he's did in the collegiate level, yeah. dominating? Do you think he should be should he drop because he's that light? Devontae Playing wide ball. receiver, Devontae a ball player, man, and it's hard to deny a ball player, and, and the proof is in the pudding. You put the film on. Mm-hmm. And the ball is in his hands. He go get it. It's electrifying, like point blank. Period. You know, what I mean? he and he's done it against the best competition in college football. I agree. You know what I mean? Week in, week out, he's a trophy winner for a reason. I agree. The okay. first, the first receiver Heisman Trophy winner in like what twenty some odd years. Yeah, Desmond Howard. Hey, longer than that. Like, like we talked about, Mac. They don't pass those out now. No sir. No sir. <laughs> Bob. Okay, Pat P, you got that one right. The second question for you is, Trevor Lawrence just signed a $2 million endorsement deal with what drink company? I did not hear this one. Okay, it's a drink company, though. I give you, I, so you can get a guess. it's $2 million, so is it a sports drink company? Yes, it's a sports drink company. He went to Clemson, so that's ACC. Yeah, okay, I see you trying to go ahead and figure it out. Uh, uh, that's not Gatorade, so I say Powerade. Oh, it is Gatorade. It is Gatorade, really? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. He already signed a deal with Adidas. He just signed a $2 million deal with Gatorade. That might be a half for you right there, because you did yeah, say- Yeah, because, you know, because I know if, if you, I know they got Gatorade there, but I know most ACC schools with it being, at least we, from when I, I know we don't drink Gatorade because- We don't drink Gatorade either, because you know why. Exactly. Uh, because, yeah, because Florida. Florida. Exactly, of Florida. so that's why yeah. we don't drink Gatorade. Mm-hmm. So I thought most other um, most other teams, and some for, for some odd reason I thought I saw Powerade on their um, on their cooler cans, but yeah, that's why I went that way because I know the history of college football and Gatorade, and that's why I said Powerade. But got me. Okay, next question for you: What game did Eagles head coach Nick Sirianni play with draft prospects during Zoom calls? The head coach for the Eagles, he said he played a certain game. With draft prospects on one. Zoom call. I ain't hear this. Rock, one. rock, paper, scissors. He played a game, rock, paper, scissors. Shoot. Yeah, he did. I, I don't know what they you know. They, they, was, was, he, was it the breakup? The monotony? He, no, he said he wanted to see how competitive the prospects were, like in trying to win. So he wanted to play rock, paper, scissors with them. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, that's what he said. Right, hey, hey, Mac, is my screen froze? No, you, you are you frozen? Oh, you know, I saw your eyebrows move. Oh, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, <laughs> he should have been frozen saying that foolishness. 
Right. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? How can you determine how competitive this is rock, paper, scissors? What about people who don't even play rock, paper, scissors? Like what? That don't even my make daughter played rock, paper, scissors shoes. So you telling me that she competitive? Yeah, my kids play it all the time too. <laughs> and that's the thing, they do it wrong sometimes. If some people say rock, paper, scissors, shoot, or some people say rock, paper, scissors, and they just it's show the what they're doing, man. It's, like, you know how some people are like, what, what are we doing? No, it's like, the third, it's the third rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Yeah, exactly. Right? That's yeah. yeah. Well, that's what he said. He went and he said, uh, you know, he wanted to see how competitive they were and, and wanted to hey. talk trash to them. Hey, you remember, man, Cincinnati Bengals asked me, man, what's the difference between a pen and a pencil? Yeah, we see we saw how that worked out for Cincinnati. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Last question for you. Gronkowski set a new Guinness World Record for what? I haven't heard this either. That's what, hey, man, Mac, you see me where I'm at right now? I ain't even at home, man. Yeah, I know. You, you, yeah. I'm happy to see you on dry land because, you know, usually you ain't on dry land. <laughs> you, got me at the, you got me at the perfect <laughs> time, man. This was a great week to get me as, yeah. as Pat Herb. And y'all yeah, got you, you, You've been doing pretty well last few last few shows. Yeah, because I was home, man. Way. I was yeah, on dry yeah. land, coach. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but well, uh, let me tell you what he did. He caught a pass from a helicopter 600 oh, feet Oh, no, 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 no. You saw it, right? I did see that, but I didn't know that was him because he had a number jerk. Of- mm-hmm. uh-huh. Yep. That was Gronkowski. So I got that right. I didn't I know that was Gronkowski, you, though, but I saw, that, I saw that this morning because it was 600. I can tell you exactly what it was. It was in Arizona State Stadium. Arizona State. Football, I think it was spring football. Yeah, Arizona, Arizona. Arizona State. Arizona. The Wildcats. Mm-hmm. Not the uh, uh, hook them. I have you uh, said in Arizona State, but anyway, Arizona State Devils. Sunday. He had a blue jersey on. He had a blue jersey on, and a yep. helicopter dropped the football. I did. You're see right. That. Yeah. I didn't know. That. I didn't know that was uh, Rob though. I just saw yeah, the clip. I didn't know that was him. That was him. All okay. Right, All right. Well, we in there. You know, we gotta go to committee on some of these, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> but we understand given the circumstances as we see the backdrop. That, right. You know, you you've been doing a lot of moving around, so we understand now. 21 questions. We might, you know what? There's no might. We will have to change this part of our show to seven questions because as Pat P revealed early in the show, he now has a New Jersey number. He's rocking number seven for the Minnesota Vikings. So this may be the last week you guys hear of 21 questions. We will change that to seven questions. Uh, 21 questions is where we get a chance to interact with you, the fan the listeners, and the viewers. If you want your question to be answered in the future, leave a question attached to a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, and we may get it on this show. This question comes from Tay in Florida. Shout out to Tay, who's in Florida. I love this question, (laughs) Pat P. (laughs) Why doesn't Rondé Barber get any love when it comes to the top cornerback list? He definitely revolutionized the nickelback position. And his stats here, my bad, I had to get my notes together. Man, Rondé played 16 years, Pat P. Listen to these yep. stats. 47 career interceptions, including 10 in 2001 when he led the league, eight pick six, 197 pass deflections, 15 forced fumbles, 28 sacks, five-time Pro Bowler, three-time first-team All-Pro, part of the 2000s All-Decade team, and a Super Bowl champion. Hey, Tay from Florida, thank you for that big-time question. And I'm right there with you. Why is he overlooked? Not just at the all-time cornerback list. This man should be in the Hall of Fame by now. Yeah. He that should be in the Hall of Fame now. Look at that championship team that he was a part of in, in Tampa Bay. That outstanding shutdown defense. Mm-hmm. He was the third member of the big three, if you're asking me. The right. first two guys, Derek Brooks, Warren Sapp, and then Barber. Derek Brooks, Warren Sapp, they're in the hall. Barber should be in the hall as well. I think he should be in the hall of fame. John, they probably gonna put John John Lynch in front of Barber, but I'm right there with you because John Lynch was on that team too. Yeah, Lynch is in. Lynch is in. My bad. Lynch yeah. is in. But but so, I, I, I no, consider I'm with you. I'm with yeah, you. 100. Lynch, Lynch is already right. in. But I think I think Barber was a part of the big three before Lynch. In I my think, opinion, I think I think Rondé would definitely get in very very soon because. Like like you said, what he was able, what he what he was able to do over sixteen years and able to change the nickel position, not only change the nickel, nickel position, but he also he was the first guy 
to be a corner that not not the first guy, but one of the first guys to be one of those transit uh, transcending players to where he can play outside and inside. My, yes. Remember, he was a starter on the outside, and yeah. then when he came down the third down. Defense, he went inside. He went inside. Yeah. Um. Rondé and Brian Kelly. Uh. uh yes. Uh, Abraham. They had Abraham. Yeah. Yeah, so, so so he was always he, that outside perimeter starter, but in sub packages he moved inside. Right, because he was. I mean, obviously in in Tampa they ran a lot of cover too, so they wasn't acquired to do a lot of running behind like the systems that you know that I'm in or you're in in, in the fire zone. Me being in the man to man system, so it, it, it's different. What 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 he was able to do in that cover two system and what he was able to do to to really revolutionize the nickel position. It was Man. like he, he's he he's the god of the nickelback position. No question, like, <laughs> he, he is what he is. The he's a nickelback, image. right? No Better doubt yet, about it. He could be the corner image for guys who have the same stature. You know what I mean? Might right. not be big like yourself, but guys mm-hmm. that can be so instinctive. Forty-seven interceptions, man. This man had eight to the sixes. house, eight, eight pick sixes, twenty-eight eight. sacks. Yeah. 15 That's- force fumbles. This man was a ball. He was a baller. He, oh, anytime he played against Philadelphia. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. McNabb Philly, him, uh, it was Philly. Uh, anytime he played against Atlanta, he balled against Atlanta. He balled against everybody. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, he he, he had a great year. And he's been a finalist. He's just been waiting, Pat P. He's right, been no, a finalist. He's just been waiting. He's going to get in. He's definitely going to get in, uh, deservingly so. But here's my thing. This where I think. And I don't want to get no, no grief over this or anything like this, but this is where I believe where the committee got to have people that played the game. Like, yeah, that, you said that this before. Get in between the lines with these guys. Because there's a lot of guys out there that, that got the stats that, you know, belong in the hall. And, and that's not there because I forgot who we had on who we had on they talked about this when the the younger writers that maybe that was it was it have, Steve Smith senior I think it was but that may not have x y and z back in the 70s here we are in 2021 so how do they know oh that was Mel Blunt work? that was Mel Blunt who said that Mel Blunt that's who it was so that's why we got to have more guys that play the game more guys that's in the white lines that that are actually watching the game because that's my biggest thing on people who, who are giving out, not, not discrediting them, not all of them, but for the most part, they're watching the primetime games. If you're going to really do your due diligence and, and put somebody in a category where they should belong, you have to do, you have to watch everybody. You have to watch the games. You have to watch how they move. You have to watch how offenses are literally altering their game plan around this one player Man. that matters this is horrible that barber is not in but he has think, the numbers and he has the film yeah and i think he will definitely be in soon because you know me matt you know with me wanting to have those aspirations of being in the hall no question if you have three if you have two or more first team all pro it's a 40 percent chance of you making it if you have three you got three yeah, Those, if you have three or more, it's a yeah. 67%. It increases, man. and he's still waiting. We're going to start yeah. it right here <laughs> for Barbara. We're going to start it right here for Rondé. He'll be in soon. No Rondé question. will be in soon, No man. question. Rondé, we got we to get that campaign going right now. Yeah. He'll be in soon. And I can tell you this much. They have leverage. The Buccaneers organization have leverage. They just won a championship. Yeah. They just won a championship. They have leverage to do something to try to get. Mark my word. He'll, he'll be in within the next three years. With his name. He should. He'll, he'll he should. be in the next three years. And and great question from Tay in Florida. Tay is in Florida. Great question. (laughs) 